Well, Israel bombed targets in Lebanon and the Gaza Strip on Sunday, ahead of the one-year anniversary of the 7th of October attacks that sparked its war, as Israel's defense minister declared all options were open for retaliation against their arch-enemy Iran. Hezbollah rockets launched late on Sunday got past Israeli air defense systems and landed in Haifa, Israel's third largest city, causing damage to buildings. This is what police have said. But Israeli media are reporting that 10 people were wounded in the rocket strikes in Haifa and the city of Tiberias. But multiple blasts have shaken the southern suburbs of Lebanon's capital, Beirut, amid Israeli airstrikes on the night before the anniversary of the 7th of October Hamas attacks against Israel. The attacks have come after Israel issued new evacuation orders in southern Lebanon. So Israel's bombarded Beirut in what appears to be its heaviest assault yet on the Lebanese capital. It's also the first time that residents of Haifa have seen rockets land inside the city. But for further clarity, we have with us from Tel Aviv, journalist Nick Kolyohin. Thanks so much, Nick, for making time for us on NDTV. One year later, Nick, many on ground say glimmers of hope have now been shredded. Now, Israel and Iran teeter on the edge of all out war. Take us through the sentiment in Tel Aviv. What's happening where you are? Israel is marking one year anniversary to the most cruel terror attack that happened in Israel and probably in the world world. This is the biggest tragedy that happened to the Jewish people since the Holocaust. About 1,200 people were slaughtered and 251 were kidnapped. From them, 101 still in the captivity of Hamas. And Israel will commemorate their memory in several different events throughout the country. One of the events will be where the Nova Festival happened, where 300 93 people, young people that came to dance were slaughtered in the music festival of Nova. And another major event will be in the Hayarkon Park in Tel Aviv, where the families of the victims of the 7th of October will come to mark this tragic event. And this event will be aired on the Israeli TV, on many other international TV channels as well. But Nick, you know, many people who've been protesting, they increasingly fear that the fate of the hostages, meanwhile, will be forgotten in the face of the fighting in Lebanon, which continues to escalate. What are you picking up on? Israel is striving for one year now to return all of its hostages. Out of 251 hostages that was taken by the terrorists of Hamas on the 7th of October, 101 women, men, children, elderly are still in the captivity in the tunnels of Gaza. They are almost without air to breathe, in darkness, with almost no food, no water. And their relatives are begging the Israeli government to do much more to bring them back home. Israel's Government strategy now is to weaken and to destroy Hamas and Hezbollah and also it is focusing on the war with Iran while the families of the hostages asking the government to make a deal now before all the hostages will be dead. And this says there's a serious risk of all-out war between Israel, Hezbollah and Iran. Nick, it's no secret that both the scale and geographic scope of violence have dramatically increased. Do you believe it's going to get worse before it actually gets any better? The Middle East is on the brink of a major war. Israel will respond harshly to the second time that Iran is sending hundreds of ballistic missiles towards Israeli cities. One of those missiles almost killed hundreds of children after it hit a school south to Tel Aviv. Just by fortune, the children were already at home. Israel also strives to destroy Hamas and Hezbollah and also to weaken the Houthis in Yemen. And also Israel is striking in Syria, the militias there, and the transportation of uh, arms from Iran to Hezbollah. And also Israel strikes the militias of Iraq so all of these can become easily a big, big war. And now we need 
to settle it down before it will be too late mm -hmm. and it will be not just a war in Middle East, maybe the whole world will be part of that.